Welcome, I am Katie North, and you are in the Peerless Watercolors exclusive members only video section. So we are very happy that you're coming along this ride with us and we hope you enjoy your video tutorial. Um, yeah, so this one's supposed to be a little bit more kind of hands-on. So if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out. We uh, want to encourage this to be a very beautiful and creative community. So if you see comments from other people viewing, make sure to comment next to them and try to get to know your fellow artists. So that's kind of the, uh, the goal of what Peerless is trying to do with this and just kind of like create those creative relationships. So I hope you enjoy and let's get started. Bad. So we're just gonna jump right in. So there's a lot of different ways to do this and to draw kind of architectural drawings and of buildings and kind of wherever you wanna be. I know a lot of people do it from kind of that point perspective with the, um, what is it, what do they have? They have like this dot in the center and then they use a string to do all of their lines coming out from like that field of vision where you're looking like where your eye level is, which is great. So this way we're going to make it a little bit simpler for this first time just so we can get more to the actual painting and not necessarily learning the drawing part of it. But if you would like to learn how I do this, it's very simple. I am taking my photograph and I am outlining all of my sharp edges that I know I want to keep in my drawing and doing them with an artist pen. So the only reason I'm doing this is to get a sharper line when I put it onto my light box. So right now I'm just kind of outlining basically the edges of the trees um, and all of the sharp lines in the actual house itself. And that when I turn on my light box will be a little bit more visible when I put it onto my watercolor paper. So you can always do this and then do it onto another piece of paper and then have it a little bit sharper for when you're putting it onto your watercolor paper but I feel like this works just well enough. And I'm using my ruler just a little bit to help me get those straight edges. And I'm doing a little bit in pencil first, but then as I kind of get more comfortable with my outline, I will switch over to the artist pen. And the artist pens are great. I'm using the Micron pen. I think it's in, let me check, um, the, zero, the zero 03. And so when you're putting these down first, they're going to be permanent. So if they're in black, you're going to be able to do your watercolors over them without having them bleed. But then you're also going to want to take into account if you're having a tree coming over in an area of your house that you want to leave that area blank or outline it with your Micron Artist Pen as well. So also why I've sped up this painting quite a bit. There's a lot of detail in this painting, but the explanation for it is pretty simple. And I'm only doing about a few layers of paint to get all of my shadows and even on the trees only have a couple layers too. So even though this painting took me probably an hour, um, most of it's kind of that drying time and also just kind of waiting for, you know, to get to the next spot. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just kind of like doing small little details in one area when I'm just, you know, really just waiting for one area that I want to be working on to dry. So <laughs> I save you the entire the entire thing and we kind of kind of, you know, speed it up a little bit. So feel free to pause at any time if you're doing this um um cabin it's a cabin yeah it's a cabin this is that's a fall cabin in the woods or if you're doing your own cabin or house or a friend's house is i mean they make great gifts too so especially with the holidays coming um a personalized painting of someone's house you know maybe if they just bought it it'll be so cute but anyway uh now that i have all of my lines and the ones i know i want to do in permanent and to have sharper black i'm kind of doing those and you can see over to the right side of my painting that side is actually where that big bright vibrant kind of orange fall tree is so i don't have nearly as much of the pen work on that side all right and so for our paint palette we are using a pretty limited palette it is warm sepia, autumn's indigo, verdinand green, orange, yellow, and black. So this little paint palette that I have, I'm able to make a reservoir of water and paint. And so I'm starting off with that sepia color and then just shifting the tone a little bit in different areas that I want. And so I'm adding a little bit of the blue to make it more cool. And then I'm adding some of the orange to make it a little bit more um, a warmer color. So as I'm kind of working through this, I'm just kind of keeping it that one tone throughout the whole house. And that's just going to be our 
base and the um, the lightest paint color of the house basically and then on the bottom there is our first little area of ground and I'm just throwing all of the kind of colors in there and then I'm gonna put sprinkle down some salt for some texture and let that whole area and the ground dry and then we're gonna work up now on the sky so for the sky I'm going to saturate the whole top half of the painting and use a very 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 tiny amount of the autumn's indigo and we're going to just kind of get that nice really soft blue of the sky and then you're going to kind of want your painting to relax and chill a little bit and dry so we're not getting too much of a bleed and you'll be able to get some sharper lines too and then while that is drying we are going to be working down into our house again so if you look on my reference photo it's pretty dark in those areas and i don't add a bunch of detail yet but i'm just doing basically the brown and then a tint of the black with it to kind of start adding those shadows where they're going to be in the house and how we did that base color for the main part of the house we're going to be doing the base color for the window upstairs or the door upstairs and the door downstairs and then just kind of bringing some of those tones into the house because whenever you look at a house too there's going to be kind of more colors than you think and just having a little bit of that green and a little bit of that blue in the walls of the house look really good so outlining your fir tree now we're doing just the main trunk and stems and that's just going to kind of give us a guide and then as that you know those shadowed areas aren't quite dry but you want to make them a little bit darker you can go ahead and do those now and you're just going to want to try to like give it a moment to see where your depth is so this house is a little hard it's a little tricky because there's a lot of trees in front and i'm not doing as many trees but you want to make sure that that patio above the downstairs door is dark enough that when your eye looks at it it shows that the 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 actual door is further back from the steps basically because there's a whole whole area there too so you get that by adding the darker shadows and it's really just kind of going back and forth between your reference photo and your painting and then you can do that little eye squinty thing to make sure that you're you're starting to get that depth perception then you can see it when you unfocus your eyes sometimes you can see um, what's going on a little bit easier so right now too you kind of want to give it a chance to dry around the all the house area which again we just work back into another part of it <laughs> and we're going to be doing the trees so i start with the verdinand green and then i am adding autumn's indigo and i'm adding the orange and i'm adding the black and basically i just want to get a bunch of different tones around that same verdinand green family but as you can see as i'm adding them all onto the page the like while it's wet doing the wet and wet technique you can get a lot of different different looking trees and different colors and i feel like it makes it look so pretty and then for this ginormous fall orange leaves that have just turned the most gorgeous color <laughs> you are going to use as much of this paint as you can pack in while it's still wet and i kind of had this rule of right now it's not too much of it but we'll, when you when i do the next layer on it you can see is that the bottom part of the branches they're going to be a, a more richer and brighter orange to red and then the top are a little bit more yellow um kind of like they're highlighted by the sun but you know something like that so i feel like it's a little bit more natural but you know again that's personal preference all right so now that we're letting our trees dry we can work on the inside of the house again and do a little bit more of our details so i am doing all of the handrails in the autumn's indigo and then i'm going to be adding just another layer of our shadows and then begin doing the layers for what is it um like the wood paneling on the outside of the house which make it a little bit more realistic and also give a little bit more of that depth perception and then also filling in the windows with black and even the um let's see what are we doing the outlining of the doorways a little bit i do go back later and do it a little bit darker but it is kind of you know just to kind of get a get it going <laughs> uh, outline your windows outline your trees and things like that you can use a transparent so it's not like unless it's like you know in shadow a little bit I feel like they do look a little bit better when they're a little bit darker but yeah again still working in that kind of circular pattern and letting some areas dry and working on there those steps definitely need to be a little bit more darker underneath to make the the steps pop out a little bit for the field of vision and so you want them to be a little bit darker behind her. Um, yeah. 
I bet. And so working on the trees again. So I love fir trees. I think they're so pretty. So now that you have your kind of outline and your base colors, which are going to be the lightest areas, I'm going back with a pretty much uh, the verdant and green again, a little bit stronger and doing kind of the bottom half of each branch that you've created. And so they'll leave, I'll even come back again one more time and kind of do individual kind of tree branches and everything too as like the final detail of it. But for now, just doing that little bit of that pop. And then into our fall tree, doing a couple branches in the brown and the black. And then like I was trying to say in the beginning, and like the lower halves of the branches get a brighter orange and red. And then they get the little bit brighter on the top too. So kind of working around all of their adding another layer on the trees behind the house. Those ones aren't going to get as detailed as the one in front just because they're going to be further away. So they're, they're going to be a little bit more kind of softer or blurry, like a blurred effect almost. And then whatever's going to be closer is going to be a little bit more sharper and more detailed. So, and now, yeah, kind of just working around the house. So my, my picture I actually had, there's more of like a, you know, front entryway that you could see a little bit better. So I'm kind of just making where that tree's coming out of the ground to make it a little bit more, more realistic. Like there's <laughs> not just a floating tree that gets connected to the ground. That, that helps when you're doing these realistic kind of, um, architectural paintings too because you kind of like okay this has to make sense this has to go into ground and then there has to be some sort of a you know texture underneath there so and then kind of going back again uh, still making more of my details and this next one we are doing I believe yeah okay so this is going to be my darkest layer and my I mixed a puddle of the black so I'm able to kind of do a little bit bigger and I switched over to a watercolor brush just so that kind of holds a little bit more paint at a time since I have the water was reservoir brush blah, 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 um, filled with black and I want to kind of do a little bit thicker lines and I'm kind of just making sure I know exactly where I want these darkest lines to go because this is a pretty pretty darker black and then yeah just kind of going and see now too you can kind of see that it starts to take shape a little bit more and it took about four layers of those shadows to kind of give you that perception that the house is back and the tree the, you know even that doorway is back from the front of the house and then those steps are coming forward every little every little kind of switch that you do and layer all help in those um in that category <laughs> All right, so now I've done most of my bigger areas in for my shadowed areas and with my black. And now I'm going to make a even darker black but switch to my extra small detail brush. So this brush, I'm going to be doing all of my fine detail work. So now that everything is, I know exactly where it's going to be. I outline all of my handrails, my steps. I outline the... Um, um, I guess there's still a handrail. Yeah, like the handrails for the deck, the blue ones. And I just make them super sharp. And you can do this with an artist pen too, but the, the artist pen is always going to be like, like a much harsher line. I'm using a very small detail brush, but it's still in watercolors too. So it has like a little a, a softness to it, even though that it's black, if that makes sense. And outlining my um, uh, door. And then the window inside the door has like four little panels in there and the top deck and all the way around. And so with the same brush, once I am done using my black puddle, I am going to be using my white highlight. And the white highlight, I'm kind of doing in small kind of skipped lines to kind of look more like chipped paint and a little bit more just like softer. I'm not doing as many um, white outlines over like a whole area if that makes sense so this is basically my completed fall cabin and i hope it's a good start for you guys to start doing your own houses and buildings i would definitely like to do another one that's more of like a like brick or cityscape kind of thing but i definitely want it i just love this fault cabin so much i feel like it was just like the perfect for for right now <laughs> um but yeah so really it's not it's not too crazy but it's just building out those layers and having again i feel like um reference photos just make the hugest difference and just building out those shadows until you get that 
depth perception is really what's like the main key here. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And if you try this tutorial at home, make sure to tag us. We would absolutely love to see your paintings and we will see you next time. And if you have any questions or comments or even desired tutorials, make sure to add them to our comment section and we will try to get them into our class schedule. So uh, yeah, this one's really, really for you guys. So let us know what you would like.